Hey guys, this is Jaime. I hope everybody's doing well this evening on April 11th, 2020. So I have a couple of announcements for you guys. If you don't already know me, uh, my name is Jaime and I'm a registered respiratory therapist. I practice here in Houston, Texas. So I have been posting videos just kind of as the need approaches in multiple caregiving positions and staffing for hospitals as far as respiratory therapy is concerned and nursing care and i mean really i would hope any any other type of bedside position could benefit from the videos i'm doing okay so i'm a respiratory therapist so everything is respiratory related mechanical ventilator related and i've been you know watching the news and i've been hearing there's a lot of new nurses they've like um, really loosened the licensure uh, requirements. We were in the middle of a pandemic. We just need as many educated people out there to go fulfill these roles. So um, I made an algorithm sheet. It's a, um, I would say, a big picture assessment of how the healthcare team works and things that you can do to assess your patient in the event of an acute desaturation in the ICU with a mechanically ventilated patient. So this is for new RTs, new RNs um, who are at the bedside and need um, a big picture assessment of how we assess patients and things that we can do for them and when to contact the healthcare team. So this algorithm will be posted with my video in the description. If you are having trouble like viewing the algorithm, go ahead and comment your email or send me a message privately and I will gladly send you the PDF document with the algorithm I'm about to elaborate on, okay? So another thing is, um, if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate it if you all subscribe to my channel, which is Breath Hold 360. And I chose Breath Hold 360 um, because I feel like right now, a lot of people in the country are holding their breath and kind of have this feeling that their lives are up in the air at the moment, which is totally fine and normal for all of us. And um, so that's why I chose that name, okay? And 360, because I wanted kind of an all around view of the patient as a whole from every, um, from every uh, perspective and healthcare worker, healthcare staff member, okay? Bedside perspective. Uh, I'm gonna give you the perspective from a respiratory therapist standpoint, okay? So in this um, algorithm, the whole algorithm is based off of a patient that is in acute um, deoxygenated saturation, okay? So that their saturation is dropping, okay? So for you as a bedside nurse, what is the first thing you're gonna do? You are gonna check the waveform and you are gonna assess the pulse ox location of where the pulse ox is, which hand is it on, which foot is it on. And if it's not a good waveform, then you have to move it from one hand to another. You have to get a new pulse ox perhaps, okay? So let's say it's an excellent waveform and you are like, okay, that's an excellent waveform. I have to go into the room. So what do we do in the event of you know, the fact that most of our patients right now in the ICU are probably going to be COVID-19. So you put PPE on first. That's the exact thing that everybody should be doing. You put your personal protective equipment on first. I want all of my videos to keep our staff as safe as possible, okay? Put your PPE on first, then go into the room, and then step one is going gonna, is gonna to be suction the patient, right? So you've assessed you have a great waveform, you go in, you put your PPE on, you go into the room, you suction the patient. Now, there's only going to be one outcome out of two possible outcomes. It either fixed the problem, you have a corrected saturation, or it didn't help and your patient is still satting in the 80s, 70s, 60s, wherever they may be satting, okay? So then you go on to the next step of the algorithm. So as a bedside nurse, your particular next step would be to raise the FiO2 to 100% and call the respiratory therapist and further assess the patient, okay? So you've done these things, okay, let me bump up the FiO2, boom, done. Let me call the respiratory therapist. 
Hey, Jaime, can you come to the bedside of bed 17? Okay, I'm coming. Be right there. So then I go over to bed 17, and we both take part in the assessment of the patient, okay? Don't wait for me to get there. Go ahead and start your assessment. So what does this type of assessment look like? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put ears on the patient, right? We're going to listen. We're going to auscultate the patient. We're going to assess the mentation of the patient. We're going to assess all other vital signs, not just the... Um, the drop in saturation, okay? So we're gonna assess all vital signs. What does is, what is the blood pressure look like? What was it this morning versus what it is now? What does the heart rate look like? What was it this morning versus what it is now? Uh, we're gonna assess all the sedation levels of the patient, okay? Is the sedation, do we need to go up on sedation? Like what's going on with the sedation, okay? So also another one specific to nursing would be check for PIV infiltration if it's possibly infiltrated maybe the patient's not getting all the medication they need so um we do this we do this assessment now what's next based on your assessment you provide a therapeutic intervention that you and the respiratory therapists are com comfortable with as a therapeutic intervention now Usually, most physicians will have different order sets and have PRN medications and have um, PRN nebulizer treatments and therapies that respiratory can do and meds that nurses can give, okay, without having to call the physician team. So go ahead and assess the patient, go through these steps, and provide a therapeutic intervention. So what types of therapeutic interventions are there. So let's say you listen to the patient, you heard a certain type of breath sound, and now what are you gonna do? The RT can do a lavage, bronchoalveolar lavage, see if there's a mucus plug, get out the mucus plug, open up the airway, let the ET tube be patent again, and your SAT may come up, you may come up, okay? Another thing would be if you hear bronchospasm, give a NEB treatment, maybe your SAT will come up, okay? Um, another thing would be the nurse go ahead, uh, going ahead and titrating the sedation. Maybe the patient is asynchronous with the vent, struggling against the vent. He's waking up and he really shouldn't be waking up. That's when you assess all the meds and you assess your IV and titrate those meds appropriately, okay? So also another thing would be assessing the vital signs what? Like maybe the patient's in pain. He's super tachycardic. Maybe he just needs pain medicine instead of sedation medicine, okay? So um, assess all of these things, come to an agreement what therapeutic intervention you're going to do, and go ahead and go for it. You can also refer to my previous video on mechanical ventilation alarms, a very brief introduction to the mechanical vent, and uh, what different alarms ringing on the vent may mean, okay? So um, that video could also be very beneficial in your assessment and um, in choosing a therapeutic intervention for the patient, okay? So now let's say you did it, you chose a therapeutic intervention as a respiratory therapist and a nursing team, and now you still have continued desaturation, right? Let's just say you have continued desaturation. And I'm sitting there like, I gave a neb, I did a lavage, I don't know what else to do. And she's like, well, I gave more sedation, but the patient, I mean, it didn't really seem to do much, you know? Um, so call the physician team. That is the next step, okay? Now we can wake them up, bug them, you know, hey, ring, ring, ring. I need, you know, I need the fellow here over to bed 17 and make you at his most timely convenience, okay? So, what is the physician gonna do? He's gonna order tests. He or she is gonna order tests, right? Diagnostic tests. Now we get to poke and prod and get to do all these other things to what? What is the goal? Gather information. And you'll see that that's like, basically our entire job is looking at the monitor, looking at the patient, making observations and bringing all this information together. We are, as healthcare professionals, information gatherers. That's what we're gonna do. So what is the physician gonna say? Let's run more tests. Let's do labs. Let's get an ABG. 
Let's get a chest x-ray, see what the lungs look like. Let's go to CT scan and get ready for transport, right? So these are the options. There are probably other things. Maybe they want an ultrasound. Maybe they want a few other, um, other tests. Uh, I didn't include those, but there's more than just these four examples, okay? So then what? You do all your tests. You get your results back. And now what? You're going to set up for another therapeutic intervention, right? Based on these diagnostic tests coming back. So you, do, you as now it's like everybody, right? The physician, the fellow, the resident, the nurse, the respiratory therapist, the charge nurse, right? Maybe a more senior nurse is coming over and trying to help you guys assess the patient. So now we get an ABG back. We're looking at the ABG. Oh, you know, we need to change settings on the vent. You know, these are not no longer appropriate vent settings for the patient as you know, lungs change as disease progresses, we need to make changes on the ventilator, right? So APRV as an option, AKA bi-level mode um, as an option, uh, maybe just change one thing on the vent, maybe just the PEEP, maybe just the respiratory rate, maybe just the tidal volume, right? Maybe you need more serious uh, interventions for as far as the lungs are concerned. Prone the patient, maybe you need to adjust sedation again. Maybe you need to um, add another medication, okay, for sedation. Um, there are other things, including bronchoscopy. However, um, that is highly unlikely in the event that your patient is a COVID-19 patient. Um, and just keep in mind, these are like rough draft therapeutic interventions. There are many, many more that are not listed here, okay? Um, so as I said before as well, you're, you have other medication additions um, or changes to medications, okay? And hopefully after you've done all of these things, you have assessed, you have performed a therapeutic intervention round one, you have called the physician team, you have performed all these other diagnostic tests, boom, here comes therapeutic intervention number two. And hopefully after all of these things, which can take hours sometimes, to figure out what's actually wrong with the patient or what needs to be adjusted, you finally get to the correct desaturation, okay? And even that is not always a guarantee, but my goal for this video is to give you a rough draft, skin and bones, big picture of how the healthcare team works as a whole, because you are not the typical nurse, okay? You are not the typical respiratory therapist, and this is not a typical patient or situation, right? As far as a pandemic crisis is concerned. So what I want you to do, my goal for you, is to see how the process of assessing a patient, doing things that are already in the order set. Um, if you're not sure about something, always ask, always, always ask wake up a doctor, check with your neighbor nurse. You know, if they don't know, check with your charge nurse. Also, you know, my advice is never do something that you're not comfortable with or you're not 100% sure about. Always ask, there's no shame in asking, okay? I've always asked lots of questions, okay? So, so um, that is the goal that I want you to, um, to understand that this algorithm is meant for the big picture because you are someone who has never worked in a hospital or never been part of the direct patient care healthcare team and you know how to say in making those types of decisions. So I want you to get the big picture. This is your foundation of assessing patients when they have acute desaturation, okay? So use this as a big picture foundation and then with your own experience start filling it you know i can make the boxes bigger you can make your own algorithm sheet and like add to it all these other assessments tools diagnostic tests um, that you learn as you go through this experience okay now i will tell you i did not put bagging as an option for this particular algorithm so the reason I did not put bagging as an option is because we are taking care of COVID-19 patients, okay? So 
bagging can cause the aerosolization of COVID-19 uh, viral particles and put healthcare staff at risk of exposure if you are not wearing the proper PPE, okay? So I personally want all of the healthcare staff in the hospitals to be safe and wear proper PPE before entering the room, right? We never run into the room. We, ne we don't do that, right? We put PPE on first every time, all the time, okay? So put it on first, go and assess the, assess the patient, treat your patient. And when it comes to bagging a patient, always refer to the healthcare team, always refer to the institutional policy, your particular hospital policy, um, because when you break the vent circuit and disconnect it, you are going to be releasing those viral particles into the air, into the room. Um, so I know several institutions are doing things differently. In a normal patient, we would break the circuit and bag the patient. This is not a normal situation, okay? And these are not, I mean, this is a pandemic, okay? So check with your healthcare team. And I just am saying this, that I want everyone to be safe, okay? So do the best thing that your institution has in, in place for your hospital policies and procedures. Check with your healthcare team. Um, and, um, you know, I wish you good luck. I hope you really got a lot of good information, quick information out of this video. And I hope you take it as a skin and bones representation of the healthcare team. And you start adding your own beating heart. You add the liver, you add the stomach, you add the intestines, you add the lungs. That is for you to fill. I gave you the skin and bones. Now you fill it up, okay? So um, please don't forget, refer to my full disclaimer uh, underneath in the description part of this video. And like I said, the PDF will be attached to the description. And if you're having trouble downloading it, go ahead and um, leave a comment with your email or whatever email address you want me to send it to, and I'll happily send it to you. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Breath Hold 360. I'll continue posting as other things come up and other questions arise in this pandemic for um, you know, new healthcare bedside staff. Okay. Thank you guys so much for what you're doing. You know, hang in there. It's going to get better. Um, so I wish you guys the best. Okay. You all take care. Have a good night.